Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here, and today we've got another Five Guns video for you. Uh, today's is going to be a little bit different than you're probably used to seeing on the channel when it comes to Five Guns. We thought it would be fun to do a top five picks uh, between Chad and I of all time. So I get to pick my top five, he gets to pick his top five, and we're going to showcase those for you uh, today. And there's always a wild card too, so it's really six. Always a wild card. Always a wild, always wild card. card. But we got to thinking, you know... What would be your, your top five favorite guns of all time? We're talking, it doesn't matter if it's a rimfire, if it's a shotgun, if it's a black powder rifle, if it's a military surplus rifle, if it's a modern gun of some sort, whatever it may be. You have, if you had to pick five, what would be your favorite? And I get asked that question all the time. People are going, hey, you know, what's your favorite rifle? It, Eric had mentioned this about a week ago, and I've been racking my brain trying to figure out five guns. It's hard. It's hard. So hard to narrow it down to five you, guns. You can't narrow it down, but ah. here's the thing you have to remember about this list, okay? We're not considering things like personal defense needs. Mm -hmm. We're not considering things like uh, you know hunting or accuracy or target shooting. All we're considering is what our favorite guns are, and, and that can come down to a lot of different things. Um, when I was compiling this list, one of the things that I, I kind of had going in my mind is, okay, well, which guns do I shoot the most? Well, well, not only that, but also, which guns are you more attuned to look for as far as collectability goes? Well, you yeah. know, and that depends, you know, so this list is going to really be different uh, for, for different people. So, I like to think of a well-rounded top five list as being something that appeals to you personally, mm -hmm. um, aesthetically, uh, maybe has some associations uh, to you as the way you came up as a gun owner. So. Here's my five. We're going to go down the list here. Um, now, this one kind of goes along the, the lines of guns that I shoot a good bit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my little Sega. Uh, this one's a 545 uh, by 39. It's just a real homely, little ugly Sega conversion that I've had for a long time. Oh, basic. basic, uh, basic. Yeah, just a real basic Sega conversion. Um, just a... I can't really say much about it. It's It's got this uh, RS uh, Regulate, low profile mount, LaRue rings, Vortex 1 to 4 PST. It's still sporting the original four end that came on the gun when it was imported. Uh, Bakelite magazines. We did turn back the uh, muzzle and thread it uh, for, you know, this two chamber Tapco brake here, which is pretty much a standard, uh, you know, AK-74 style brake. I added a Polish barrel Folding, uh, folding stock that is a uh, kind of a old school Polish stock, and then we've got a Moloch grip. Mm -hmm. And this thing's been spray painted about three times. <laughs> it's been burned up a little bit. We it's shoot been, that thing all the time. I shoot this <laughs> thing all the time. And I tell you what, you know, this little gun's ugly, but it's one of my favorites. I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's, it's accurate. It's reliable. It's a great little package. It's got the folding stock. Well, you've had that. You had that original stock for a long time, just kind of sitting around trying to figure out what to do with it. Right. You know. But I mean, I've got that Sega Five Four Five Two that that I got from Moss a while back, and you know, it's kind of sitting in pieces right now because I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. It's one of my favorite rifles too. But sure. I don't know if I want to make it kind of modern with a Zukov set, or just go back to the original wood furniture, or keep it kind of homely looking, or what. But well, this little gun, as ugly as it is, it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you came and looked at my uh, my gun collection, you'd probably think, okay, well, surely there's a million and one things that he would like more than this, but. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, if it came down to just going to the range and having fun or, or general defense use, personal defense, mm. I love a 545 AK. It's just one of my favorites. I, I can't put my, my finger on it, but I like it. Can't explain it. I just love the gun. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, Scar Heavy. And these are in no real particular order, are they? No, they're not really in any kind of particular order. Um, what what I decided on this, I mean, this is, is kind of something that I would chalk up to a you know, life and liberty slash duty gun Dude, slash a, range gun. I mean, let's just put it simply. This is a go to hell rifle. Yeah, I mean, I think every every top five has to kind of encompass a few things uh, when it comes to your favorites. I mean, so why would this gun be my favorite? Uh, do I have some personal relationship with the gun? Uh, do do I? You know, the thing is, it's accurate. It's one of the most awesome semi-automatic rifles I own, and uh, I love it. Yes, they're expensive. Yes, they're overpriced. Yes, FN's kind of full of themselves. <laughs> but at their core, it is one of the best guns that FN makes. It is. Period. It's probably one of the best 308 caliber semi automatics out there on the market. I mean, there's a lot of good, high quality 308 automatics, but man, the SCAR just. 
it, it just kind of takes the cake. It, it, really, it does. really does. I mean, you know, and when it came down to, you know, me looking at different 308, you know, guns and everything, and an auto-loading platform, the SCAR kind of took the cake in terms of being one of the go-tos. Uh, we've got a LaRue Tactical Low Profile uh, LT-104 mm -hmm. uh, mount. Uh, we've got a Leupold Mark IV. It's a 4.5 to 14 by 50 millimeter front focal. Uh, we've got an Atlas Bipod, which is an awesome bipod, oh, yeah. and it's got a uh, LaRue quick release uh, cleat on it. Of course, our standard 20 round magazines. I added a uh, little Magpul rubberized grip, Mo Plus. The only thing you need to do now is get rid of that Ugg boot stock. Well, we do have a Geisley trigger in it, so we got Ooh, the yeah. uh, Geisley Super Scar in it. And I tell you what, sometimes guns just uh, have to be fun, mm -hmm. but sometimes guns need to be accurate and they need to serve a purpose. And for me, if it came down to it, uh, you know, certainly when it comes to my favorites, the scar is definitely in there. Uh, I would find it very difficult to to imagine after owning this gun not having it. It's just such an awesome, awesome gun. It is. I've been eyeballing one myself, to, you know, just to put in the collection for a while. Yep. But ooh, man. well, I heard they're coming out with a 20 inch uh, DMR type yeah. version. As soon as that one comes out, I'll be sure to pick it up. We do have a full review coming out on this gun soon. Uh, going down the line. You guys, it shouldn't surprise you, K31. Uh, I love Swiss rifles. I like military rifles in general. A lot of you guys know me and know that I, I mean, if you saw this room we're in, I'm definitely into surplus firearms. This was a very difficult choice because there's so many awesome surplus guns out there that I love so much. Mm -hmm. And it's impossible to narrow it down to just one. But if we, you had to narrow it down, dude, we could pick five. I mean, we could pick ten favorite Milser rifles just in that category alone. The thing is, you know, with military guns, if you love one, you love them all. You do. It, it's kind of hard if you're into these types of firearms. It's it's hard to not like them. Well, it's hard to ignore the historical significance of these firearms. It I mean, is. That's one of the biggest things. Plus the the machinery or the the uh, the machine that was put into these rifles, the care, the assembly. I mean, just just the mechanism itself, just the entire, I, I don't know. Like a to, finely tuned Swiss watch. It is like a, I mean, just yep. the machine itself is just, it's amazing, you know, what, what these, these, these people did, these armories did back sure. in the day. I mean, and to well, think like a rifle like this nowadays would cost thousands upon thousands of dollars to produce. And these are available on the market for usually less than a thousand bucks. They can be, they can be. Uh, yeah. With the K31, uh, you know, a few of the points that it gathers in my book and why it's in the top five for me, accurate. Mm -hmm. Very well made, wonderful materials are made out of really good high quality materials, excellent heat treating, good fit and finish, good bores, good good uh, barrels in them. They're just one of the most accurate bolt action rifles that you're going to get when it comes to a military rifle. And, you know, again, the needs are different for different people. Some, some guys might pick a Mosin to go in the top five just because it's one of the cheapest guns and they can hoard them and buy a bunch of them. That's fine. And... There might be a Mosin in the midst of this here, but I picked the K31. It, it's really the, the Milserp gun that, to me, does it all. It, it's, it's, it's a good value for what it costs. They're accurate. They're cheap enough to feed in the way of ammo. Uh, they offer themselves quite well to customization, trigger work, I mean, mm -hmm. bedding of the stocks, if you wish. I mean, they're just a wonderful rifle, and it's a rifleman's rifle. And I guess that's one of the things that, I mean, I picked this over the M1 Garand. So that should tell you something. I mean, we're talking not just top five. If you know, remember this list encompasses all guns, not mm -hmm. just military surplus. So I made it a point to make sure K31 was in my top five. Well, remember that we've got a uh, we've got a video out on a sporterized K31 that just shoots the living daylights out. Oh, I know. I mean, I know. You know, and I got to thinking when you're doing these five guns videos, or at least when we're doing them, especially when you're talking about a top five of all time. It, it's really difficult to say, okay, well, I have to look at this from the terms of what I like, not what I would choose if it were only five. So, you know, there's going to be people that are going, what, there's no shotgun in this list or whatever? Well, it's because they're my favorites, all right? And for me, what I look at is I like stuff that's, that's fun to take out and shoot, stuff that's nostalgic. It's either going to fall into the fun to shoot and nostalgic category, or it's going to fall into the life and liberty and it's just an awesome auto loading, you know, kind of like the AK and the Scar R. Mm -hmm. But I did include a handgun, okay? Makarov PM. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite guns of all time. Not just handguns, not just, you know, falling into a specific use as a gun. But the Makarov PM is probably, to me, one of the coolest guns ever. It's I can't explain neat. it. 
I can't explain it to you. I, I really wouldn't be able to tell you why other than the fact that it's just that Cold War nostalgia. They're so collectible because there's so many different ones out there. I mean, these two are a couple of beautiful East German examples. Uh, but, I mean, you can get Chinese ones, Bulgaria, Russia. Uh, I believe there's a couple of, well, of course, there's East German yeah. ones out there. But, so, yeah, steel frame, alloy frame. I yep. mean, you know, three, yeah, uh, Hungarian three versions, and all that stuff, yeah. too. You get 380 barrels for them. I mean... Well, you know, Max, I don't know why. I mean, at one point, these things were coming in. They were so available. They were so cheap. And everybody was snatching them up thinking they'd be disposable handguns. They could just throw in their, uh, you know, center console of their truck. And if it got stolen, no one would care. Sure, it still <clears throat> falls into that category. But mm -hmm. for me, I don't know why. I've always liked Comblock weaponry. And, and I've always enjoyed the Cold War nostalgia mm -hmm of the Makarov PM and well, the hey. fact that these things are used still all over the world. Oh yeah, well you and I used to carry one of these every day on a, on a regular basis before we got into, you know, other handguns and such. Well, the thing is, you know, with these Makarovs, this is one believe it or not, this is one of the handguns that I shoot the most accurately. Well, it, it kind of lends itself to good accuracy. I mean, right. in, in the Makarov lineup that we did, that gun just shot the living daylights out. Yeah. I mean, it really did. Oh, I know. I mean, that an East German Makarov you know, if you're looking at getting a Mac and say you're only going to own one or two, it is impossible to beat an East German Makarov with a good clean barrel in it. Feed it some cast ammo that you size properly or feed it some good ball. And they shoot so good. They're just so fun to shoot. They're nostalgic. They're they're cheap enough to where they can still be kind of collectible even at the common man level. Mm -hmm. That's why I made it into this list. I, I could not imagine myself being a gun owner and not owning a Makarov. At least everybody needs to have at least an IJ-70. You yeah, know, a good Russian one. Yeah, you know. something. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving down the line, uh, this is the, the last choice, um, a Martini Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were actually on some business the other day, and we went into a, uh, a shop up on the north side of town, and one of the guys came up to me who was kind of a fan of the channel and was you know saw some of our videos and everything, and he was asking me about the Martini Henry and how much you know he loved the gun, and we kind of got talking about it. And uh, I tell you what, after you know my experiences shooting the Martini Henry and the effort required to load the ammunition and shoot it, yes, it is an undertaking of uh, you have to have a lot of respect and care uh, for military guns in order to go through the process of wanting to even bother shooting one of these it's things. A, it's a labor of love, there's no it, doubt. It definitely is, and I, I tell you what, when it comes to guns that are just downright fun to shoot, the Martini Henry... It's just an awesome gun, and I, I can't imagine not owning them. They're just awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and this kind of covers the black powder itch. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you, it, they're just great guns. They're very nostalgic. They have that historical aspect to them. They're fun to shoot. They turn heads at the range. Anybody that's never seen one of these, you break one of these out and start shooting it, and they're going to walk down there, and they're going to ask you what it is. I mean, it's a head turner <laughs> at the range. There's it's no not a gun that. that a lot of people get to shoot. Oh, I know. Every time we've taken that thing out, I mean, there's been a line of people wondering what in the world that thing is and if they can uh, send a round down. Uh, it's one it. of my favorites. I love martinis. I, I love British uh, military firearms. I love Swiss military firearms. You know, I love Comblock weaponry. So that's why, you know, these five kind of came to be. Of course, you know, FN, this, uh, this particular SCAR being an awesome gun. Uh, we do have one wild card. And um, well, no one else. I mean, you gotta have a Mosin. Gotta have a Mosin. But this, this, you know, isn't just any Mosin. This is a Finnish M39. Uh, this almost made it into the mix, but um, I figured a lot of you guys would give me a hard time for not having a Mosin in my top five. So this is my wild card. Uh, Finnish Mosins, and particularly the M39. These things are the Cadillac of the Mosin family. They're very well made. They're accurate. They're very reliable. It's just a great bolt action rifle. If you're looking for something in 54R that's really accurate in a bolt action realm and it's fun to shoot, look no further. I mean, I'll tell you what, when we uh, did the video on that rifle several years back, I mean, I was shooting that thing offhand at our at our shoot steel gopher from like 125, 130 yards, offhand, just pegging this thing just with boring regularity. Yep. I mean, and it was just sending them in at three, 400 yards like, I mean, like it was nothing. These rifles are so well made and accurate, it's not even funny. Yeah, they, they are. And, you know, th this list, guys, for me, we're going to move on to Chad's top five here in just a moment. I know this video is going to be about twice as long mm -hmm. because we're basically giving you two top five lists for this video. But uh, these are my top fives. Uh, would that change down the road? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But um, these are the guns that I've always consistently gone to as being just my favorite guns, not only to take out and shoot and enjoy, 
but for various purposes. I mean, we've got the nostalgia factor, the collectability factor, the life and liberty, liberty factor. Uh, you know, that's my top five. Sounds good. Well, let's uh, reset the table here and uh, I'll show you mine. All right, we're going to move on to Chad. Let's do it. All right, guys. Well, you saw Eric's top five. And, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, when, when he mentioned this idea about a week ago, I just had a hard time trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to show. I mean, it, it's hard to think of your five favorite guns of all time. I mean, notwithstanding any any particular criteria, but, you know, out, out of all the, the guns that I own, I, I didn't even pick a handgun. I mean, I love Glocks and everything, but, you know, I have to say the rifles are kind of my, my big baby. You know, I'm you know? kind of the same way. You know, I, I thought about throwing a Glock in the mix, but, you know, I mean, it, it's I mean, a tool. It's a, Glock, yeah. it's a tool that spits bullets. But... Mm -hmm. Probably my favorite rifle that I that I own and that that I had a longing for was the M1A. Okay, and this one is extremely modified. I mean, this thing <laughs> I've had this for several years now. I bought it as a loaded model, but uh, I've got a uh, I've got an arms number uh, 18 mount on here. Seekins rings, loophole Mark IV, the same that's on Eric's scar. Uh, Atlas bipod, um, a few other odds and ends. This is a U.S. Palm cheek riser. And uh, I normally run my SDN6 suppressor on this thing, and I've got a uh, Schuster adjustable gas plug. This this rifle overall was one of my extreme favorites. I just I love the the history of the M14, its lineage with the M1 Garand, uh, M1 carbine, and such. Just the the mechanism, just all steel, just that really clunky action. I mean, just something about it. Just the sound that it makes when you rack that first round in the chamber. I mean. I don't know what it is. It just, it's a classic American rifle, but there's no doubt. It it really is. The, these rifles are pretty much, if you want a good 308 iron sided rifle that you can just get behind and shoot five, six hundred yards with relative ease, this is how you do it. I mean, it really is. But that's probably one of my favorite rifles in the safe. And uh, going back down the line, you know, 1022. 1022s in general are hard to beat, but this is one that I've had for years and years and years. Um, this is a very highly modified Ruger 1022, and actually the only stock part left on this is the bolt, which uh, actually was sent up to uh, CPC in Connecticut to have them uh, blueprint the bolt and uh, jewel it and such as that. I mean, it's been completely customized. This uh, rifle has a uh, shill and barrel that's been cut back to 18 inches, threaded into an MOA stainless steel receiver. This is a uh, Fasian thumbhole stock. We've got a kid trigger group. At the time when I bought this kid trigger group, it cost more than the base rifle did. <laughs> but TPS base, TPS rings, and a Leupold, um, kind of a match style scope with a small target dot. This rifle is set up for silhouette shooting, but that's kind of what this rifle was based around. It was a really high quality silhouette rifle, and with proper ammunition, this rifle will shoot quarter inch groups at a 50 yards. So, That's an awesome 22. I mean, I, we've been doing a lot of work with that gun. Uh, that that particular gun is the one that uh, we did the How Far Will a 22 Kill video. I, I know many of you have probably seen that video. And that was one of the only guns that we had between the two of us that was actually capable of truly showing mm. repeatable, consistent accuracy at four or 500 yards with a 22. It, it's hard to shoot a 22 that range, but when you've got a really accurate, a hyper-accurate 22, it, it kind of... It helps. It, it helps, but... <laughs> The, the main reason that I wanted to put this together is I just kind of wanted to, I wanted to put together a semi-auto 1022 that would shoot as good as an shoots bolt action. And, and I accomplished that. And there's still more that I could do with this rifle uh, to actually further its accuracy potentials. And that's the scary thing. I mean, it's... Ooh. Now, that gun costs 10 times as much as a standard car. Oh, there's, there's $2,000 in that rifle right yeah. there. I mean, it, it's a $2,000 <laughs> But it's nice. I mean, when you're talking about an auto-loading auto uh, 22 <sighs> rifle that's accurate, that's definitely accurate. Yeah, 1022s are kind of one of my babies. But oh, yeah. I am a huge combat shotgun fan. And um, I've been collecting combat shotguns for a while, and there's still several that I need to add to my collection. But I have to say that the uh, Benelli M3 is one of my absolute favorites. This is a, a convertible shotgun. It can operate in semi-automatic mode or by the flip of the switch, pump action. So it's it's kind of built for like military and police use mainly. So if you want to run low velocity shells or um, less than lethal munitions, that kind of sort of thing, you switch it to pump mode and you can run those very low uh, recoiling rounds. It won't cycle the action. Or if you're wanting to run three inch mag uh, duty loads, that sort of thing, slap it in semi-auto and just pump them out. Yep. But um, I bought this shotgun, and this is actually an HK marked. So the Benelli's, the early 90s Benelli's that are HK marked are more highly collectible than, you know, what's out there now. I mean, they still produce the M3s, but 
there's no way that I would want to own an M3 nowadays. I mean, for the, for what I gave for this rifle or for this shotgun, I mean, just and, and being HK marked, this is a highly collectible piece, and this is actually one of my absolute favorites that I own. Yeah, so. I tell you, I I actually bought a Benelli M4 this year, and I. It, it was very difficult for me to not put the Benelli M4 in my top five because it is one amazing shotgun. Benelli's are great. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the M3. I, I don't own an M3 personally, but I definitely, that's one that's on my list. Um, he has more of the, of the combat style shotguns than I do. I mean, I've got an M4 on the wall. I've got a Remington Versa Max. I've got the Origin 12. Got a few fun uh, 12 gauges, but I tell you what, the M3 is probably Benelli's most versatile shotgun. Oh, it is. I mean, a lot of people, they, they know the Franchi uh, Spice 12, you know, due to Hollywood, you know, being in movies and everything, but really the Spice 12 is more like just a collectible shotgun. Would I like to own one? Yes, but would I go out and shoot it all the time? Probably not. The, the parts are very expensive. They break parts quite often. If you don't get one with the proper trigger group in there, then you're going to have issues. I mean, there it could fly off the seat of its pants and just run until you know kingdom yeah, come. Yeah, they break sears. Uh, I they mean, break safeties. Yeah, they're a cool looking shotgun, but they are heavy as hell, and they're they're just not terribly practical. No. I mean, even like the Law 12s, you know, that Franchi put out, those are actually even a they're they're a better shotgun than the Franchi uh, or than the Spice 12, but. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that they're even in existence because, you know, they don't know about them because they're sure. not in the movies. But this shotgun here was used in one of my favorite movies of all time, Heat. It wasn't a ghost ring model. It was just a right, like, it kind of had the rifle sights on there. But um, Chirito used one of these or these shotguns in Heat. And that, oh, I love that movie. Yeah, it is a great movie. It is a great movie. Moving on down to the line, I am a, uh, where Eric is into Swiss rifles, I'm into British rifles. Um, I'm a huge Enfield fan, and this has got to be one of my favorite Enfields. This is a uh, number four Mark II. This is actually a, uh, a Burma contract, and uh, what's really, really interesting about this rifle itself here is it is all matching, including the bayonet and scabbard. So this has the original bayonet, all matching, and that's something that is sort of a rarity in the Enfield realm. And uh, this rifle doesn't headspace for crap. I mean, it, it eats a headspace, you know, a, a no-go gauge. But, you know, you still shoot it with um, foreign brass and just keep up with it. It works fine. It's well, this a, gun's also got the high-quality milled sights. Those oh, are yeah. Mark One sights, I believe. I think so. But, yeah, the milled sights yeah. are a little bit higher or, or more desirable. Um, they had a lot of the uh, rear sights later in the war effort that were stamped just to save on costs and such. But, uh this is one very nice rifle. It's not quite as nice as like some of the Irish contracts and such that yeah. were out there that were sent over to Ireland but not really put into into use, and they just kind of remained in the Cosmoline and the wrap. Those are extremely collectible, but guys, those things can fetch fourteen hundred bucks. Well, I tell you, out of all of the um, World War II rifles, the the Enfield, in my opinion, had the best sights. Oh yeah, you know, good sight radius. I mean, especially guns like this that are equipped with you know actual you know diopter sights. Another interesting thing about this particular gun being a Burma contract <clears throat> is the fact that it still has yeah, a brass, brass butt, butt plate. plate. Uh, the natives were known for taking the brass <laughs> butt plates off of them and yep. going and cashing them in, and then they would, you know, make some random butt plate out of pot Zink metal or something like yep. that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's hard to find these older contract rifles with the original brass butt plates, and that's one of the other things that really kind of drew me to this rifle and I just I couldn't pass it up I had to pick it up oh yeah and uh, actually at the same time I bought one of my other favorite rifles Egyptian Hakim now Eric has the uh, the Swedish Jungman which is the predecessor to this rifle um, basically what the Egyptians did was they they licensed the design of the Jungman which was originally in 6.5 uh, uh, by 55 Swede and they adapted it for 8 millimeter use and they gave it an adjustable gas system because of the wide variety of 8mm ammunition that they had in their stockpiles at the time. I mean, they had everything from super hot military loads down to just uh, just old stuff that was kind of, the powder starting to go out on, the primers were starting to go out on, that was weaker. And they had to have a rifle that would accommodate all that ammo that they had to save on money. So they adapted a um, adjustable gas system in here. This is direct gas impingement, so the gas comes up, basically just directly impacts the... Uh, the uh, bolt here and it fires from a 10 shot mag and uh, mags are detachable I mean th this rifle this rifle is awesome and uh, you know Garand thumb is one of those things <laughs> where uh, you know if I can remember how to work the thumb here we go Garand thumb is one of those things but uh, you know I, I'm really 
not looking forward to the day that I actually get my finger caught in this monstrosity right here. It will get you. I mean, there's ooh, there's a lot of scary. history that surrounds that that rifle, and uh, it's it's definitely definitely on up there in terms of cool factor. Oh yeah, that's a good choice. So, uh, what's your wild card? My wild card is big bore. I, I'm a huge big bore fan. I love 4570. And um, I picked this up in a local shop around town here. Uh, this is an 1895 uh, SBL guide gun from Marlin. And this is actually one of the pre-Freedom Group guns. So this is actually like a 2006, early 2007 model, which was still of decent quality. And uh, I took this rifle and kind of slicked up the action a little bit, dropped the Wild West trigger in here. And um, I, I just love 4570. And I've been toying with the idea of uh, putting together like a 12-inch 458 SOCOM upper for my ARs. It was very difficult for me not to add just a generic AR in this lineup because they are so versatile. I mean, AR is really one of but my But that's almost guns. their downfall, though. It, they're it they're is. so versatile and they're so common that they almost lose their personality. And they I do. guess that that's the reason that, like, you know, guns like the AR and the Glock and other real common guns mm -hmm. didn't really make it into both of our lists collectively. It's because they are so common and so modular and and so compatible that they're almost boring they are i mean they have their use though but there's so many things out there for ar so many caliber choices i mean you got 556 three and a blackout 65 grendel 458 socom 450 bushmaster 50 beowulf. i mean 50 beowulf all kinds of crazy stuff but some a good quality lever action rifle just has this particular charm to it. It does. I mean, I, I love lever actions like the old trapper rifles in you know 45 Colt or some of the um, Henry rifles that we have in like 44 Mag. I mean, those things are great. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not my favorite rifle yet because I've still got a form out on it. But you know, I've got a form on that uh, 44 Magnum mare's leg. And I, I don't know when that thing comes back. That might turn into one of my favorite lever that action might, rifles. That might take the place of this one, huh? Uh, I don't know. I mean. This one here, you know, you got the little excess um, lever rail on here, and I've got a little vortex razor on top. So, you know, just a little red dot sight for getting through the brush and uh, killing, you know, Miss Piggy, you know, every now and again. Yeah, that that's an awesome gun. Well, uh, guys, I know this video is a little bit on the long side, but hopefully you gleaned some information. Maybe you enjoyed this video. I want to know, what's your top five favorite guns of all time? Leave your list in the description box below and uh, let us know. Uh, is there a gun that we missed that we should have, you know, had in our top five? Uh, were we wrong? Are you right? Let us know. Uh, we'd really be curious to see what you guys have to say about uh, you know, what you would pick as a, as a top five of all time. This was an extremely difficult video to make in terms of picking which guns. Because you know there's going to be people out there that are going to go, well, why didn't you have this gun in there? Why didn't you have an M1 Garand? Oh, why yeah. didn't we're, you have this? We're un-American because we didn't have American guns in here. Wait a minute. We did have American guns. Come on, man. I mean, uh, Marlin. Yeah, I don't think I had a single American gun <laughs> I don't in think my you lineup. Did. I had two. <laughs> well, the M1A. Well, the M1A too, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. Well, it could be in Renko. Yeah, maybe. But, you know, hopefully you uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned. we got a lot more fun stuff on the way, more Five Guns. Uh, you know, we are the original Five Guns channel. We are. So, you know, we, we've been doing this for quite a while, and we'll continue to. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider uh, subscribing if you're not already. Uh, more on the way. we got more uh, Five Guns, more gun gripes, all of that good stuff. Stay tuned. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time. Take care.